people of Eternia, I stand before the great eye of the galaxy, chosen by death. Hey Yesterland fans, I'm Neil and welcome back to another episode of The Toys That Made Sense. Just a little recap of the week's events since I posted that video on Jackson's journey. We're worrying for Jackson. Uh, at this point, we've raised a little over, uh, probably close to like 21, 20, somewhere between 20 and $22,000 for him. Um, we're still working on getting him into uh, another facility, or I should say his parents are, it's not really me, but it's support from folks like you that is trying to rally and get this kid where he needs to go. Everybody sharing my video, I appreciate it. Everybody sharing all of the Instagram posts, Facebook posts, TikTok posts, everybody sharing this in general, we appreciate it very much. And it's getting into the right hands. We've made some good connections this week and fingers crossed, uh, things are starting to look on the on the on the bright side here for him in seeking other treatment potentially not with the facility that he's with because that's what we need at the end of the day we need a facility that's going to be able to treat this that has more advancement in the technology and um, and fighting this cancer so again from the bottom of our hearts we appreciate all the donations all the suggestions all the leads and uh, any advice that you have. So it's not uh, going unwarranted, just to let everybody know. Now, let's move into the fun part of this video. So I picked this guy up here a couple weeks ago. It's the Masterverse uh, Screen Accurate Skeletor. He's been out for a little bit. There are several videos out there, but this is going to be mine. I'm looking forward into digging into this. Um, I'll tell you right now, I wasn't too fond of the movie screen accurate Dolph Lundgren He-Man. I didn't like the head sculpt on it. And then they give you the additional updated uh, He-Man head. I'll throw that up now so you can take a look at it. Just didn't care for it. Um, they could have made that character pop so good. Uh, the colors were dull. The head sculpt is horrible. They really missed the mark on that Mattel. Really, really missed the mark. So... I'm excited. Let's get into this guy because I've been wanting to open him up and play with him for a little bit. So sit back, grab your favorite beverage and snack, and I'll see you on the other side. All right, guys, here we go. We've got him in studio. And let me tell you. Really cool piece. Probably so far, in my opinion, one of the most screen accurate portrayals, even from the Revelation cartoon to the original Masters of the Universe movie to, you know, from 87 with Dolph Lundgren and uh, Frank uh, Langeria. Probably the best uh, face sculpt that I've seen to date. Unless you get outside and you get into like the models and you get into the big um, vinyls and stuff like that, obviously. But for this line at a seven inch, almost eight inch action figure, you you can't you can't go wrong here. I actually picked this guy up uh, pretty inexpensively. I had a credit, so I got him uh, from Target, and really didn't cost me that much, and I got free shipping on it. So. Yeah, it was one of those things where I was like, hey, what do I what do I need? And I was looking around on Target and this kind of stood out and I was like, yeah, let me get this. So really excited to uh, dig into this guy. He doesn't get a lot of accessories, but for the portrayal of the character and the purpose of the character, he didn't work with a lot of accessories in the movie. So I've been hearing people give him a, a bad rap and I, I think that's ridiculous. There are some characters where minimal accessories are probably better than over accessories that are just an abundance of too much and they end up getting lost. So for me, I think this is a this is a this is a win-win. But anyways, getting into the box, Masterverse, Masters of the Universe, Skeletor, 30 points of articulation, barcode, Mattel insignia down in the bottom, flipping it to the side, we get that great picture of Frank there. As Skeletor on the side holding that key and his staff. 
flipping it around to the back here. Skeletor, evil tyrant of Eternia, the nefarious sorcerer, finally conquered Eternia. He made the knight, uh, the mighty sorcerer his prisoner. The secrets of Castle Grayskull were for his best taking, but for one nuisance, He-Man. Though his foe evaded capture using the cosmic key, Skeletor hunts him down so he may absorb all the power of the cosmos and declare himself the masters of the universe. And here we go down here. We get this horrible <laughs> rendition of He-Man. Um, good God, he, I don't even know what to call him. Like, what do you call that head sculpt? What do you call that face? He looks like... A, 50-year-old guy or 60, 70-year-old man with plastic surgery and Botox and stuff and trying to take himself back to his 20s. It just looks horrible. It doesn't even look like Dolph. So anyways, these are all the uh, other figures you get in the line. You get He-Man. In this wave, we get Evil Lynn with that uh, bat head set up. We get Frosta, we get Roboto, and we get Stratos. I've already got Stratos. I've also got Roboto. That'll be a video coming out here in the near future. Uh, the insignia down at the bottom, empowering the next generation through uh, play, Skeletor on the side, all the legal mumble jumble on the bottom, kind of an aerial on top. So without further ado, let's get him out of the box. All right, guys, here he is. He's out of package. And basically you get one, two, three, four, five, five accessories. If you want to call the cape six, you can. And any of the armor, some of it's removable. Some of it's not from what I re uh, remember kind of looking into. I think, I th no, actually, I don't think any of this armor can actually pop off. Yeah, you can with the belt here. And then this might be able to drop the legs here. And he doesn't have this... Um, this armor cloak type uh, stuff on. But anyways, hey man, right out of the package, great figure, stands great. Uh, I can already tell he's gonna pose awesome. Uh, let's get into it. So with the hands, we get an open hand, closed hand, get a peg there. We got these silver tip fingers on there that reflect uh, the motion picture. And you can even see him on the fist. So that was a nice little touch. Coming in onto the cosmic key. You know what? They did a really good job for being a, for a seven inch action figure and getting this uh, pretty close uh, film accurate. They did a really, really good job. You, If you're a Masters of the Universe guy, you definitely know what this is. So they did a really good job on it for what it's worth. Um, the sword, I'm not going to lie, sword's a little flimsy. It's that pliable plastic. But when you get down into the handle, we get into some beautiful, beautiful detail. I love that skull work there with like the bat wings and then the hands coming up holding on to the blade. This part of it, beautiful design. Nothing much to write home here about. Just a pliable plastic. Uh, moving into the staff, let's go. Very intricate design, very screen accurate, very, very close to screen accuracy. Um, you see that goat's head or ram's head there. Good detail. I'm digging it. It's really nice. We get the staff here. Does not rotate. It's got some like um, band work here in the staff for reference. And uh, that's pretty cool. Gives it some definition. Mine's pretty straight up. It wasn't bent at all. Now, moving into the star of the show. <clears throat> We've got Skeletor from the feet up to the top. We'll do this. We've got this. It looks like maybe a new style designed foot. I like it. They're a little bit larger. So that gives him uh, that base because he is a big figure. And if he didn't have it, he would probably be top heavy. So I'm digging that. We get here into his shins. And his calf area, they give him this interesting boot that kind of flares out. And it's got some detail there with the skull on the surface. And then we got some detail in the boots, like it shields going up the, up the calf of the boot. Moving into the thigh, it's just your uh, plastic um, black here. It's almost got a shiny speckly type uh, finish to it or glitter in this plastic. Could be to help with when the way light portrays and hits it, gives it a little bit of flash or pizzazz. So I'm kind of digging that. Um, 
he he is bendable at the knee, as you can tell. I know this is kind of hard because we've got all this around him, but again, I don't think that armor comes off, and I'm not going to force it or try it. I have seen some other videos, but we're not going to get that uh, f uh, far in depth with him, but I just want to touch on the on the good basics of this character, and he's a solid, solid figure. Getting into the armor, look at that. This has almost got like a samurai feel I got going on here. And they've got these little skulls on here. I think that's pretty cool. It's a nice little touch. And then moving up into the into the straps, coming up around the chest, we get the nice um, designed belt for the abdomen area. Very screen accurate. And then we get into this kind of the shinyish, purplish, pink uh, chest armor. It really balances with the black, I think. It makes it pop. Uh, he is on an abdomen rocker there, so he can rotate 360. Uh, his his uh, dexterity and functionality of bending uh, to the front is really not there, nor the back. There's really no... Um, meaning for him to kind of be that articulated in a sense. Uh, moving over to the hands, we've get these cuffs that have this, you know, robotic, futuristic uh, look to them. They've even got down to where they got some little detail, these maybe red lights around his cuffs on his hands. And then we get his uh, open hands or grasped hands for staff and sword. Articulation in the wrist, side to side, in the uh, forearm, same thing, up and down butterfly joints. Uh, he does not really come out over a uh, T-post. You can't do that. He really has no bending in the in the bicep. So that's kind of a flaw and a, a, a setback in opinion. But I get it. It's because of the armor and the armor is molded into that arm. So you're really not going to get that kind of functionality with him. Moving up into the cow, the hood of the figure, and into the face. The best part of this figure. Look at this. For a figure that is roughly around $32.99, this is not a bad figure and not a bad face sculpt for what you're getting. And with his accessories and the overall design. Very, very cool. That looks like the screen original 1987 movie of Skeletor, played by Frank. So, check that out. That is really cool. They did a really good job. There is major, major tooling and detailing going into this mold. Uh, flipping around back, we get this plastic hood, and then we get this gold medallion here on the back of the hood that we remember from the movie, and we get into a cloth goods cape. Now, this is where Mattel is kind of hitting are not, uh, they're missing the mark, I believe, if you will, on these capes. They're kind of cheap. She-Ra's that way. Um, Skella God was that way. The only one so far, in my opinion, that's been a decent cape is probably going to be, um, uh, what's his name? King Grayskull. He's about the only one so far. Everybody else's capes in this line are, they're kind of sh shabby and, and, and flimsy. Um, yeah, I don't know. You tell me what you think. I think they could have given us a little... If you're going to give us this much involvement in a character, give us a little bit more in the cape. So, anyways, guys, the articulation in this is uh, not all there. You have some articulation. They say 30 points. I don't know if you really are getting 30. I have to really break it down. But posability-wise, this guy's going to pose awesome. You can put his staff in his hand... You know, now I know some people are like, well, he doesn't have He-Man. You don't have He-Man uh, to go along with him so he can battle. Until I can find out a, a, a better Dolph Lundgren head sculpt to put on there, that's what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll just wait. Maybe I'll pick that figure up and then just hold him. We could do a review on him, I guess. But for purposes of my collection, I really have no desire for him unless I can find a better head or someone's making a better head. We can come over here. We can put the key. Now, we know Skeletor really didn't hold the key. He kind of held it up on his belt in the movie. It was kind of under his cloak for the most part. But for purposes of this, we'll just put the key in his hand. He holds it nice. He holds that staff nice. Um, we can move that out. We can put the sword now in, in his hand if we want. Let's see how he looks with the sword. 
put them over here on this one. I don't know. I'm a righty, so I like I like putting weapons in my right hand. I I would assume Skeletor is using his his right hand. Uh, you cannot really bring it in. He cannot hold it. He cannot do any battle swings. This is going to be a pose where, you know. That's as far out as he goes with the with the sword and about as far up as he goes with the sword. He cannot hold it like in a battle stance. That'd be about the closest thing he could possibly do to get him in a battle stance like he's getting ready to swing. Uh, let's get into the hands. These hands are usually pretty easy to, to get on and off, so we'll put that fist on now. There we go. We'll take the other hand off. And we'll put his, I'll, we'll just call it the pointing hand if you want to. There we go. And that's what he looks like with his fist closed. And really don't understand the concept of why we they gave us an open hand like that. Because it's not really like he's, I guess we'd call it the open hand pointer. It's really not doing anything. So... Guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, remember to share this video amongst the toy community. Remember to um, like and subscribe to my channel. Remember that um, Jackson is fighting his life for his life right now. He is battling state or level four, uh, a level four type of cancer, they're calling it. And his family needs all the thoughts and prayers they can get, all the direction, uh, directions, leads, suggestions. Everything is being considered. Nothing is un uh, unwanted or warranted because at the end of the day, we're trying to save a life. The family really appreciates all the financial do donations. But at the end of the day, it's not the financial do donations that, that mean the most here. What means the most is saving this young man's life. And if we can put this family in contact with the right doctors that have the right technology and preferably the most non-evasive treatments, we can save this life. Let's let Jackson fight and let's let Jackson live and let's let Jackson be the first one to beat this type of cancer. All right, guys, I won't keep any more of your time. As always, I'll see you in Yesterland.